Alright, cool. So I want to drop this video for you guys on the YouTube channel because I want to share with you the Barber Session Podcast. And what a podcast is, guys, is basically an online radio show by barbers for barbers. We've been getting a lot of questions on where you can find this show. You can find it on iTunes. SoundCloud, Stitcher, and you can also find it on Tune45.com. But tonight, man, what I want to do is play one of the podcast episodes that we actually just did tonight. It's one of, with one of the most influential barbers in the industry. Somebody I really look up to, I really like. He's been in our shop a few times before, always supports us. We want to show love back. Definitely check it out. Here we go. The Barber Session is officially here. Hosted by Chris Basio, Christian Perez. This podcast is for barbers by barbers. And we're going to be focusing on different topics in the industry, product reviews, interviewing some of the biggest names in the industry, and we're going to be letting you know what it takes to be successful behind the chair. The day-to-day -day grind of being an entrepreneur is real, even in the barber industry. And we're in one of the greatest industries of all time, ever, one of the oldest ones. And, man, I just love it. All right, so what's up, Chico? How you doing, bro? Everything good, brother. How about yourself? Chilling, chilling, man. Hey, first off, man, we just did the barber session class last week, and Chico showed up, man. I just want to say thank you for showing support, man, showing that barber love. You came through, bro. That surprised the hell out of all of us, I surprised think. Surprised everybody, man. Nah, no doubt, man. I always got to show love, especially to y'all boys, man. Y'all boys been showing love uh, to me for, since day one in Tampa. You know, I rock with Tampa real heavy, man. That's what's up, man. I remember the first time I, I met you or heard of you, man, was a couple years ago at, at the uh, Exotics Battle here in Tampa, man. You showed up in a party bus limo, man. I mean, that was legit. You set it <laughs> off, boy. <laughs> yeah, but, I, it, it, you know, the first time I heard about the, the Exotics here, but I didn't really know too much about it. You know, I, kept, I caught wind of it, and oh, one of my barbers was telling me about it. So I started doing my research, and I said, man, you know, we're going to show up, man. We got to show out. You know what I mean? Because... If I was going to go up there and compete, nobody was going to remember me. I'm going to remember myself because I'm going to have that trophy. I'm going to remember that battle. You know, my clients are going to see that trophy, but who's going to remember me from that battle? So I had to do something memorable, man. You definitely stood out. It was definitely memorable, boy. Yeah, it, but I appreciate it. Listen, Buzz, you ever heard of Chico's story, man? This guy has an amazing, crazy story, bro. Yeah, he, uh, I sat in. I went to that class that um, him, Jesse, and DL set up at, at Jesse's shop at uh, in Brandon. I was sitting in the front. Mm. I was sitting in the front. I think Chico. I think you you spoke first, and I right off the rip you set the tone, man. And like your, your story is, your st your story is so so dope because it shows people who haven't get, been given a second chance, people who don't believe that there's a second chance that kind of give up. It shows people that there's no there's no excuses, man. Your story is the 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 epitome of that. Absolutely, man. Most yeah, definitely. No, so, no doubt, man. I appreciate that. Can can you kind of touch on your story for the listeners who haven't heard your story? Well, yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've been I've been out for for nine years right now, and um, you know, I was in I was in a whole another place, a darker place in my life, and I was living a whole different type of lifestyle, you know, on the streets, and you know, I was a product of my environment, but I had this gift which was always cutting hair. You know what I mean? I always I always love to cut hair, and you know, I ended up incarcerated for 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 armed trafficking charge in Miami and ended up going to prison. And while I was in prison, I had this uh, this cellmate. The cellmate was doing, uh, uh, he was already 30 in on a life sentence. And, you know, he started basically, he was, a, he was, a, he was an old head. So he started schooling me a little bit, you know, let him give, give me some uh, knowledge and, and, and break things down to me. And um, we became good friends and he passed away uh, a couple years after I got out. But, he was he, he he meant a lot to me, man. Jimmy Melvin, man, he was a, he was a good dude, and basically he made me promise him that I wouldn't go back. You know what I mean? And um, I promised myself, I promised God, like, look, man, this is it. I don't, you know, I, I didn't I didn't like that environment. It just wasn't for me. You know what I mean? And being, you know, I like my freedom. I enjoy my children, and you know, I didn't want to be locked up with a bunch of dudes all day long. So um, 
I got out and I set my mind to to focus on what God had blessed me with, which was cutting hair and touching people's lives and helping people out. I started giving to my community and uh, started getting involved with with different charities and whatnot. Uh, about two and a half years later, after I, I, after I got out, I was I, you know I had been working at at the barbershop where I had worked previous uh, to to my incarceration for two and a half years, and 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 then I was ready to make my own move, and I, I stepped to the owner, which we're still friends uh, to today. He actually still gets his haircut with me, and I stepped to him and said, "Look, I'm ready to do my own thing." You know, I had given him eight years in total of uh, the years before and the, and the years after my incarceration, and I broke away. I did my own thing, and. Nine years later, I got two shops. I'm, I'm, I'm traveling. Um, I'm motivating. I'm educating, and you know, letting letting the youth know and the, the people after me that you know you don't got to go down that road. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody's born with a gift. You gotta you know tap into that gift and see what God has blessed you with, and, and utilize that. You know, I didn't want to go back. I didn't want the you know uh, the numbers to, to to have me listed in, in there as well as one of those numbers that hey you know. 80%, 90% of, of people that are, that are released from prison go back within a year or two. I never went back. I don't, you know, I have no urge to go back. That lifestyle is not for me. And you got dudes that still live in that life that know me from back then that, you know, give me the utmost respect. And, and my G pass is still active. You can believe that. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy, man. That, I mean, that's motivational for people out there, like Bazio said, that think that there's not a second chance out there for them. And now, I mean, you're traveling all over the country. You're doing motivational speaking everywhere. As a matter of fact, I've heard that you you go back to the jails and prisons and you do motivational speaking to, to help those guys in there as, as well, right? Yeah, man. I, I mean, I, I I love going back to the correctional facilities, and you know, I'm on the other side of the um, fence now. I'm not I'm not in there, so I'm going in there with regular clothes on, and uh, you know, I'm not I'm not there, you know, marching or, or, or with my blues on or nothing like that. And it feels good to see some of the faces that you know I left behind and. And, and and see the smile on their face when they see me and they come up and they give me love you know what i mean i went there with dl and and, and jesse the the one time and uh there was about a thousand inmates we spoke to wow and wow. you know they were just I, I was just in the middle in the mix of it there was no security there, there was no nobody there was, it was, it was two guards to, to about a thousand inmates and they had a barber program and that's what and uh how we ended up going uh, over there it was a uh, Moorhaven Correctional Facility, which actually I'm going back over there because they're about to do a barber battle on the rec yard. So, Miss um, wow. Yvonne Turner, she wow. wants to be a part of that. So that's something dope. I, I haven't even told nobody about, but I'm actually going back to that. But yeah, I mean, it, it was it, it felt like you know you you on the block with the homies, really, man. I mean, they're so, regular people, just like we are, man. There's nothing, there's nothing, you know what I mean. You show them respect, they show you respect. And that's just what it is, and they they gave us the utmost respect. Nobody was. You know, making no noise. Everybody was was quiet. They give us the most uh, uh, undivided attention. They were staring right at us. Like they, they, these dudes were, were was proper, man. You know what I mean? A good crowd, and it felt good, man. And I, and I still continue to do that. I talk to the youth. There's there's, there's uh, schools over here that have trouble. Uh, uh, youth. I don't know if you guys ever had a temper. They have like ALCs, like alternative learning centers, where they send all the you know quote unquote bad kids or whatever. But these kids aren't bad. They just product of the environment. They need mentors. A lot of these guys. A lot of these kids, uh, their parents are, are locked up, either the mom, mom and the dad, and they just need somebody to talk to, somebody to guide them in the right direction. Us as barbers, we have that power. You know, how many kids sit in our chair? You don't know what's going on in that kid's life. Just because he got a brand new pair of J's, you don't know that his dad might be doing 15 years. You know what I mean? Just because he's dressed fresh or, or, or whatnot. You know, you don't know what that kid is going through. Mm -hmm. I, I, I come from that environment. You know what I mean? I came from a broken home. Yeah. You know, my mother was a single mother with three kids. We, we grew up on welfare. You know, I remember staying in line and on, and for waiting for food stamps. You don't know what these kids are going through, so it's important that we talk to to the youth, but not just the youth, the guys that people forgot about that are still incarcerated. Definitely, you know, man. they depend on us. Definitely, that's powerful stuff, man. And here you are speaking in front of a thousand inmates, and I'm nervous to speak in front of sixty students at our barber <laughs> session class, dog. I mean, <laughs> yeah, hey, I, I bet you, I bet you there was a thousand people waiting to enroll into that barber program. Yeah, man. Everybody, yeah, everybody wanted to get in that bar program, being you know, but it's, it's so small and you know they only could yeah. do so many at a time. But they 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 were hungry, man. They they, they had the guys that never even cut here that say, hey, I want to sign up. I want to be a barber. Okay. That's what you know, because they see the the you know the, the the glamour side of it. You know, barbering doesn't have to be just sitting behind a chair all day. There's more to it. It's just it's a it's a doorway for other things. You have to set that that mm -hmm. path though. Yeah, it's a platform. Exactly. It's a platform. It's just what you do with it. So Chico, bro. Um, 
why did you pick up a pair of clippers, man, for the first time? Why did you choose barbering? What what was what was the reason you chose it, or did it choose you? Man, listen, man, it was kind of a mixture of the both, man. My mother had a had a had a major role in that. She used to put out hair. And my mother was no barber. She was no cosmetologist. She was just a single mom with three kids, and she didn't have no money to take her to the barber shop. Straight up. So by the time I was 11 years old, you know, you had all the shows like like Fresh Prince, Kid and Play. Like I grew up on that era, man. I'm an 80s baby raised in the 90s. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, I seen all the all the dope fly haircuts, and and I'm like, yo, I want, I want haircuts like that. Forget this. I got curly hair. Like if I let my hair grow, you know, I keep my hair real short, but I got curly hair. So my mother used to try to give us a comb over. Imagine having a comb over with curly hair, man. It's just not a good look, man. You know what I mean? So you know, me and my brother, I say, I told my brother one day. Uh, my father picked us up. You know, he used to pick us up on the on the on the weekends sometimes, and he picked us up. And he said, hey, "Each one of y'all can can buy one thing." And my brother picked up a football. He was real athletic, um, and he still is. My sister picked up a, a, a old cassette. It was like a VHS uh, uh, tape to watch in the VCR. That's how back back in the day was no was no DVDs. And I picked up a, a pair of. Uh, of, of clippers from Walmart, man. And this was when Walmart wasn't even a super Walmart yet. That's how far back this is. It was just a regular little Walmart. And uh, I went in there and, and they didn't have a lever or nothing. It was just a regular little, you know, uh, zero gap, uh, little clipper. And, and I just went in on my brother. I said, hey, man, let me do this, man. And, and he let me. And to this day, he's like, he's always been my number one supporter, man, my brother and my sister. And I went in on him. I just got tired of my mom really messing us up. And then it's just, I was already an artist. I, I used to draw a lot anyway. So it was kind of like, that was my canvas now man and it took off from there so you were a barber out of, out of self-defense out of hair defense <laughs> yeah out of self- exactly man. i was just defending myself man <laughs> yes, like, mom, it, mom, it, mom i'm not i'm not going to school like that again mom i'm sorry yeah. it started it started on the on the toilet man it started on the toilet seat in a towel you know that was my cape you know and, and, a, and a little pinche you know the little clothes uh, yeah. uh hooks you know what i mean and one of those that was my little clip and i was i was full throttle man 11 years old, man, I was cutting hair. By the time I was 15, I was charging five bucks a head. You know what I mean? Those famous $5 haircuts, man. Oh, yeah. exactly. exactly. I went from the from the bathroom. It went to the, the back patio. And eventually, the back patio became the barbershop. You know, my mother didn't know what was going on. She, uh, uh, we used to, I used to use the, the ironing board. We had an ironing board in the, on the backyard, and that was my station. And my mother, she wore scrubs because she was at the daycare. And, and one day, she finally found out what was going on because I forgot to clean off the 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 on uh, the 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 plancha uh-huh. you know what i mean I forgot, to, I forgot to clean it off so she puts her clothes there she lifts it up you know there's white scrubs and there's hair everywhere and oh, she's like man. oh man you have, oh you see a puerto rican mom well you know how she knows she flipped out man it was, the, it was chancleta and, and frying pans flying everywhere <laughs> we all know that bro we all know that so where do you see this industry in the next five years chico Hey, I'm 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 gonna keep it real, man. If, if this industry doesn't start changing, man, and 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 I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, I don't know, there's a lot of people that 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 you know break themselves off and and form these little groups, and this group is cool with this groups, and I'm gonna put the people on that I want to put on. If that continues to happen, man, that's a lot of you know this, this industry is gonna turn real commercial. It's not gonna be fun anymore, like 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 it was a couple years ago. I, I see it changing right now, you know what I mean. But it has to, it has. To, change man on um, i see it, it you know all around just barbers deteriorating their value uh are getting pimped out by companies you know you know what i mean like oh, yeah. they're not putting a value of price on them so they're, they're just letting they just want to do it for the fame and everybody's so starstruck right now that they're losing focus of what what it is that why we're really here you understand and so if i see i see a lot of forgaziness straight up you know um this dude is, is on this dude and there shouldn't be no reason why we praising uh, you know, dudes when they walk in the door and and like like we celebrity, we all human, man. We all human and we all men, you know, for the most part, and women. Um, but you know, these guys that's coming in here, they put themselves on these platforms and they won't even come up to you and shake your hand. Like you know, be a man, man. You know, see somebody. I recognize you from IG. I'm not gonna sit there in front like I don't because I'm trying to play it cool in the corner. You know, I mean? I'm gonna go up to you. I'm gonna shake your hand. I'm like, what up, man? man I'm Chico Boom. What's up? You know, people people have forgotten to do those little simple things you know it's a lot of forgazing there's a lot of copycatting a lot of biting there's no originality you know it, it's just it, it makes me sick a little bit it kind of makes me want to just fall back and do my thing and just say forget this industry stuff you know what i mean but it's it's, it's more to what I, I don't feel like everybody's like that i just feel like there's some people like that and 
if that continues to spread, that's a cancer. Yeah, absolutely, man. I definitely I see what you what what you're saying, man. A lot of a lot of times too is like you you are you a barber or are you just you know are you just a celebrity barber? I mean, are you a barber celebrity? The opposite of it, right? Like you exactly. I mean, Drew. That's that's, that's that's the thing. It's like you know we all barbers. We all got that in common. That's what brought us together in the building to begin with. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when, when when you have a conversation with somebody, they try to rush you off or brush you off so they can go have a conversation with the other dude because that dude had 100,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Instagram is a man. Instagram don't make nobody, man. Some of the, the most uh, wealthiest people in the world don't even have an Instagram. Yeah. You know what I mean? So let Instagram be the, the dictator of who's cool and who, who's not yeah. and who's going to chill with this and who I'm going to chill with and, and all this jibber-jabber. It's foolishness. You know what I mean? Like, just let, 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 let's, let's, let's focus on why we're here because you do something that I do. You might do it better, but, hey, I can learn from you. Or maybe I do something better. You can learn from me. Let's steal, sharp, and steal. And we're here to break bread with each other and have a good time, vibe, and, and, and share knowledge, man. You know, but you being stingy with the knowledge, you're not going to be successful in life, man. Yeah, man. I, b- I believe in the growth of this industry, and I, I think it's, it's going to happen when everybody's pockets are getting a little fatter. When everybody's sharing the information and focused on, the things that you're doing, for example, you got two barbershops. You're behind mm-hmm. the chair, am I right? Still? Yeah. You I, and, yeah, and, still and, and cutting all day, spinning the, spinning the chair. And th- those are the things that we gotta focus on as barbers, as opposed to fame between bar- fame, you know, fame in the barber's eyes on Instagram. And and that's what we're trying to teach with the barber session, with the classes and stuff. It's not so much about you know be, walking in here and acting like you know you 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 a platform you on a platform uh you know above everybody else. So I I yeah. definitely see eye to eye with you on that man. I think it's dope that you you see it too. Absolutely. I mean Drew Drew was Drew was touching it with, on it with us a couple weeks ago where, mm-hmm. you know he's like man people DM me all the time and I answer. There's a lot of people that, you know DM these guys or, <clears throat> they don't even get responses. <laughs> Bro, I do a video yeah. response. If somebody hits me up on like Snapchat or Instagram, I, yeah, vi- I I do a video response and I talk to them. You know what I mean? As a person, I don't just you know, send them a, um, a text. But you know I think that's the important things. It's the little things that count. Man, that, if anybody if anybody knows me, man, if anybody know Boone for real, they know when Boone come in the building, the first thing I do is I shake everybody's hand in that room. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I, I, I do that every single time, but it's important because I'm letting you know right there. I'm humbling myself, and I'm letting you know what I mean? I'm giving you that respect first because in order to get respect, you have to give respect. You know what I mean? It's only so far that these people are going to go until they start seeing your true colors. They're going to yeah. follow you for only so long. But I want these people to follow me forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because what I got to give them is good stuff. What I got to give them is real. What I got to give them is genuine. You yeah. know what I mean? And what I what I got to give them is, is, is just love, man. You know what I mean? Love and respect to everybody, man. But that's the first thing I do. And these people won't even do that. They come in the room and they act like they ain't, don't stink. You know what I mean? And, yeah. You know. I mean, in, in just the class that we did, it was shocking to see you de- there. But I think the faces, the faces that people had was, it was shocking that you went to every single person. You shook their hands, man. And and I mean, even with me, you acted, you acted like I mean, I don't know. We probably met maybe two or three times, and you acted like you've known me forever, man. I th- That's what it is, man. Once we shake hands, man, we connected, man. We good, man. We family, man. It's all love. It's all respect, man. We there for one thing, man. We there. We not there to be beefing. We're not there to, oh, my cut looks better than his. We're not there for that. You know what I mean? If that's what you're there for, then you're there for the wrong thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Definitely, Chico. So, so Chico, um, you know, just kind of, you know, bringing on to another topic. Back to the barber and back to being behind the chair because we know you're, you're behind the chair still. What is your favorite haircut to do? Man, that's a hard one there, man. I love I love all type of haircuts. I love when, when somebody really it's not even what what's my favorite thing to do, my type of cut, uh, per se. I, I I say I like to do a big transformation. I like when somebody comes in there and it just looks the you know, totally opposite of what I'm gonna do to them and then they just walk out and be like, Wow. You know what I mean? That that expression. That's that's what I get. And that's what one of my favorite things of being a barber is is being a transformer people and not just the, the, the people but their, their their confidence 
the you know the 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 way they walk, the way they smile, the way they hold their head up high is different when they leave my chair. You know what I mean? And that's what I like. I like the transforming people, giving people makeovers. That's real big on me. So I like all haircuts, man. I mean, there's no there's no there's no one particular one. I love afros and and you know that was that was always one of my favorite ones with sculpting the afro and stuff like that and flat tops and you know mohawks. So it's so many haircuts. I can't really say that I have a favorite one. I just like the whole makeover aspect of it, like changing somebody and being like, damn, I don't even recognize that guy. That boy fresh. I mean, we see that every day, man. We touch lives, like you said. We touch people's lives. I've had people sit in my chair. Bozzi, you've seen it. Literally, you know, a gentleman that, that w- was sick for a while and couldn't get a haircut and finally was able to get up under his own strength and get a haircut and literally start crying because he saw the transformation wow. he had. Wow. You know, you, you, it's, 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 another, it's a whole other level, man, when you can't even get up to go to the barbershop because you're so sick. And then when you, finally, when you finally sit in that chair and, you know, that transformation, like you said, it's just right. touching lives, man. And, ma- and it makes you feel good, though. Absolutely. Because they get, I've, gotten goose- I've gotten goosebumps off of people right now. You see, if somebody would have cried like that, man, I would have probably got goosebumps and chills, and I would have had to embrace and give them a hug, man. You know what I mean? And it's just like, you know, even the old seniors that come in my shop, man, you know, it's like they, they come in there, we'll, we'll chop it up for a little bit. I don't even charge those guys half the time. I just give them a free cut. 80 old, 90 old, you know what I mean? He's on his way out, man. But if he could drop me some good jewels, you know what I mean? And he could he could definitely put me on to something. And, hey, man, what about this? What about that? He give me some good advice. Yeah, man, it cuts on me, man. You know what I mean? That guy's 90 years old, man. You know, you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to uh, respect the ones before you, man. You know what I mean? Appreciate them. Not only that, but I think a lot of times, you know, when, when cutting people's hair, people, a lot of times barbers are just it's all about the money it's all about the money and like even with tips and i said this in the class you know you can't be focusing on on the tips on the money because like you said people will drop jewels on you you're networking as a barber it's you know there's things of value that customers give you that doesn't necessarily have to you know have be a direct reflection to the money that get that they give you in your pocket you know what i mean so like you like you said with with the older cats they, they're dropping jewels on you you know just the fact that you're helping them and makes you feel better I mean that's 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 a, that's value enough. Motivation right. itself. Right. Exactly, man. And and yeah, exactly. And man. barbers lose sight of that a lot of times, and all they're worried about is how much they're gonna charge, man. I can't stand that term NFT, bro. It drives me crazy. It drives yeah. me crazy when the I money, hear barbers say that. You're getting paid for a service yeah, anyways. <laughs> yeah, the, the money, the money, the money's gonna come, man. If you if Absolutely. you market yourself right. If you conduct yourself as a businessman at all times. If you have great customer service. If you have good conversation. You don't got to have to be the best barber. That money is going to come. You know, you set a value, you set a price on yourself, and you value yourself, then people are going to value you. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, look, bro, I've seen all type of – I've been in the, in the industry 15 years, cutting hair, and I've, I've seen all type of barbers come and go. I've had all type of barbers come in out, out of my shop, you know. And I've seen some good ones. I've seen some bad ones. I've seen some bad ones that took care of those clients, yeah. you know, and it and, and, and was just overall just a great – you know, it had great personal uh, relationships with these people, great customer service with these people. And these people were blessing them, and, and they, their haircuts wasn't all that. It was it was like, you know, I'm talking on a scale of 1 to 10. I'm, I'm, I'm talking like 4s and 5s. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and the guy that was arrogant, that had the 10, the, you know, he had a 10 instead of 1 to 10. He had a 10 all day, but guess what? He didn't talk. He put headphones on. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? He didn't. He didn't really. He didn't really interact yeah. with that client. He didn't look out for that client. He didn't talk. You get to know that client. He want to talk about himself. Yeah, yeah. You can't talk about yourself. You gotta get to know that client. What's that client's name? How old is he? How long has he been married? What is his kid's name? Yeah. Half the barbers don't even know that. They don't even know Jack Diddley squat of their client. And, All they want to talk about them. And they don't care. And, and they client. don't care to know. Hey, and, and they don't care. And look, they too wrapped up. Yeah. We was having a conversation with Jesse. Um, about you know hire we're all shop owners and uh, we were talking about hiring barbers and we asked him you know passion or talent and his answer was real quick is passion right and he says because the the barbers who are arrogant that think that they're the best they're the most arrogant right but the best barbers in the shop aren't are usually they're never the busiest and and the busiest ones are usually not the best ones they're the ones who who are humble they're the ones who who are professional? They're the ones who are can coachable <laughs> and can hold a conversation and and all that that you was just mentioning. Exactly, now, bro. now you're a shop owner. When you're doing your hiring process, passion or talent? 
I mean, I agree. I agree with Jesse, man. You know, um, I, I got to go with passion, uh, talent, talent. You know, you could teach somebody. You know, I could teach somebody how to cut. I could, I could, I could mold them on, on the type of person I want. But if he has no passion and he has no ambition, he has no drive, then I'm talking to a dead horse. I don't need nobody. You know, I don't need a a a, a log. You understand? I need a worker, man. I need people that, that wants to take care of people. I don't need a total lo- a log around a log. all day, man. I don't need a yeah, that's a log, man. He's just a dead log. I'm gonna start using you know that. Man? I'm gonna start yeah, using that. Yeah. Right now. A log. No, he's just dead, dead, man. He's just dead weight, just sitting around doing nothing. I don't need that type of negative energy vibes in my shop. My shop look, man, I've 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 gone through uh, a hundred people and a hundred people came and gone and went and I'm still here. Yeah. Six years later, my shop's still pumping. It's called boom for a reason. We booming every day. You know what I mean? And, and it's because of the people that I choose to have in here. I've had cancerous people in here, and I let them go. Every shop has had that. Yep. You know what I mean? It just happens in, in this game. You're going to have good. You're going to have bad. You're going to have those logs. I don't want no log. I want a dude that, that's, that's driven. I want somebody that's passionate, that, that that's humble, that can stand next to me whenever he's not cutting and just watch me. You know, because watching is, is 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 a big process of being becoming a good barber. Learn from the ones before you. I used to go to barber shops and sit there and watch these older guys just cut hair. Just watch. I wouldn't talk to them. I wouldn't do nothing. I just sit there and watch. You know, but that comes with passion, though. If you have that passion, that ambition, that determination. Yeah. If you don't got that, I don't want you because you too stop. You too cocky. You too. You know, uh, uh, you're only gonna get about six months to a year from you before you out there opening your own shop. And guess what? You you're gonna be the only one in your shop, but probably what like one other barber that is just as cocky as you. And that place ain't not gonna last that long, man. There's been a lot of them that, that's came and gone and closed and sold, and you know they don't last. They're not there for the long haul, man. Yeah. All right. So so Chico, let me, the last time I think you were here was like two years ago, and I've seen you boom like literally grow over the last two years. You're all over the place. Every time I look at my Instagram feed, every time I. I Anything that has to do with barbering, your name pops up, man. You're, at, you're at, booked at all these shows and stuff. And I know you're a hard worker, but let me ask you a question. What do you attribute in such a short span the success that you've had in this industry so far? Hmm. I mean, look, man, it's just, it, you know, it starts It starts with, with, with me. It starts with my faith in God. You know what I mean? I, I always let God take control of everything. But I like to surround myself with good people. Real recognize real, man. You know what I mean? I know real dudes. And and coming from the, the type of environment that I came from and applying that into a positive uh, mindset that's allowed me to, to grow and, and become the person I am. But it, it starts with, with, with one, you know, inner self. Like, what do you really want? You know, you got to ask yourself that. What, what are your dreams? What are your aspirations? What are your goals? And you have to set those. But you have to do it, though. You have to accomplish it. You know, I set goals for myself, and I told myself, I, don't, I need to do this, I need to do that. And I've done it. I've gone out there and, and went and got it. I don't wait around for nobody. Mm-hmm. I talk to God. I talk to myself in the mirror. You know what I mean? And I tell myself what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do next. I pray on it. If it feels right, I go for it. But I put myself in these situations. You know, I don't wait around for nobody. It's, you can't wait around. You can't. Close mouths don't get fed. You understand? You got to put yourself in. The door's not being open for you. Kick it down. You know what I mean? That's what I do. And I've just surrounded myself with, 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 with great people that have helped me in the in this industry. Jesse Lima, uh, uh, Curtis Smith. You know, those are, those are two main guys that opened up to me, like, off the rip. Like, when I, as soon as I met those guys, they just opened up to me. And they just, like I said, real, recognized real. They knew what I was about. I knew what they was about. You know, just by just by talking to them, conversating with them. Yeah, you know, DL Master, Kenny Duncan. Kick the door uh, down with uh, that bus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Moore, success at it. You know, these are dudes that just, you know, on the, on, I, I conversate. And, you know, they've they, 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 they told me, but they've been in the industry way before me. I've been in the business, I should say. I've been in the business for 15 years, but they've been in the actual industry, you know what I mean, before me. So I just, you know, putting yourself in those situations, picking up the phone and calling people, returning people's phone calls. Yeah. These, you know, the, you know the, these these. These little things, people forget about the little things. The little things is what counts, man. Picking up somebody's phone call, could, you know, is a lot. You know what I mean? Having a conversation with somebody, getting to know them. You know, I talk, I've talked, I've had a conversation with Jesse on the phone for for hours. You know, just talking, life. You know, building relationships is important, man. If you don't build relationships with people around you, you're not gonna get nowhere. Most definitely, I agree. So I saw a post you put up on Facebook and Instagram, and <clears throat> you were talking earlier about how you know customers sometimes old heads, you know, dropping jewels on you, and you had stopped at this right. old barbershop, 
that have been there forever. What was that experience right. like? The, the conversation that you had with them and, and stuff like that. What was that like? Oh man, that was a beautiful thing, man. It's downtown Fort Myers. Uh, Fort Myers is is, is 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 real historic, you know, downtown area. You know, Thomas Edison. You know, he he was one of the pioneers of Fort Myers. He he had a winter uh, estate here, and uh, it's an old barber shop, and it's, it's called Blake's Barber Shop. It's been in around 1920s or something. I don't know. They've been there for a hot minute. And it's the oldest barber shop in Fort Myers, and I, you know, I'm, I'm advertising this class uh, that I got coming up April 24th is on a uh, Sunday. I'm bringing Danny on down, and we're doing a class. And so I go around town, and I just talk to uh, all the barber shops and all the barber shop owners. You know, I'm a str- I'm a firm believer, man. As a true businessman, you can't have enemies, man. You know what I mean? If you don't have enemies as a, as a, as a businessman, as opportun- uh, entrepreneur, then you know. Uh, it's- Guys, the limit and beyond. You know what I mean? Like you, you'll grow a lot further. So I just went in, just talking to different business owners, promoting the class. Hey, my name is this. Da 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 da. And um, I went in there, and I was always fascinated with the place. I've stopped mm-hmm. in there before and just took a picture, or whatever. But actually, I actually sat down and and, and talked to uh, Miss Yvette and Mr. Jim, man. And these people have been doing it way longer than, than any of us have been alive. Especially uh, Mr. Mr. Jim, man. He's you know 83 years old. He's still cutting. And he was so smooth with it too, man. The way he was moving was so swift. Like this, this old man's fast, man. Like he, he looked like he had a one-two combo, man, up his sleeve, man. You know what I mean? Like he still had it in him. But um, we talked, we chopped it up, and it was amazing, man. It was a, such a good feeling, man. And and they felt good too, being that somebody, you know, that was younger than them was having an co- actual conversation. Cause we forget about the, the 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 old folks, man. Let's just be honest, man. You know, uh, we forget about you know that what they've done for us and we forget about even showing respect to talking to these people so the fact that i was even talk, talking to them they enjoyed it so i was showing them instagram and they didn't know what instagram was and uh she, you know they were trying to zoom in on the pictures on instagram and stuff they didn't you know what I mean? so it, it, it was real cool that he pulled out he pulled out the old polaroids and we going through the picture so it, it was a great experience man the barbershop has a, has a the picture does no justice they all have these old antique chairs and they all have these these porcelain sinks in between each station, so it looks like you're walking into a whole nother era, a whole nother time zone. You know what I mean? A whole nother uh, uh, time in life. You know where where people operated different, and you know the the, the brick uh, road that, that that downtown. It looks real nice, man, and it, it was amazing, man. So it was, it, I, I can't, man. So it's a pretty cool experience. That's what's up. So uh, yeah, I, mean, man. I don't I don't know about you, Bazio, and I don't I don't know you about well, you, Chico. You touched on that, but. Is it me or, or do those old school barbers, man? Barbers nowadays, they just don't. They, those old school guys, they like cut like with style, man. They like have like a style to when they cut. You know what I mean? Got style and finesse, man. <laughs> got style and finesse because they cut they cut up under somebody. You know that nowadays they just giving barber license to anybody nowadays. You know what I mean? You can go into school, you don't know uh, nothing about nothing, and you go in there. You, you as long as you do the curriculum and answer all the questions and fill it and fill it in all the bubbles, right? You know they give you a license, man. That's, and it's not about that. They don't they don't teach you about the business. They don't teach you about. Uh, how to operate after the school, you know, how to how to go, you know, market yourself, brand yourself. They don't teach you none of that. All they teach you is, hey, you got to do this many perms, you got to do this many cuts, you got to do this many styles, you got to answer all these questions. Once you got that, you got your license. What happened to apprenticeships, you know, working up under somebody and from a real master barber? You know, these guys that are calling themselves master barber and they only been in the industry and in the business for one or two years, you're not a master barber because you got your license, you're not. Just because you know how to do a, a nice fade, you 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 don't you're not a master barber. You're not, you know what I mean. So I, I was actually talking to Curtis the other day, and um, we we're talking about uh you know texturizing the hair and, and and putting the chemicals in. He's like some of these barbers don't even know how to do that, and I could do that all day. Bum, bum, you know what I mean. So it's like, you know, somebody it's true. Some of these barbers don't even all they know how to do is a fade. Do you, what? How, how's your shear work though? Yeah. Can you cut women's hair? You know what I mean? It's like you're a barber. You got to be a barber all around. You got yourself a master barber. You have to be a master of that craft. And that's why these older guys cut the way they do. Why? That's why they got that style, that finesse, because these are real masters of their craft. They've been doing it 20, 30, 40 years. You know, they can truly call themselves masters. But you're not a master at 20 years old. You're not a master barber. You can't be a master barber at 20 years old, at 22 years old, at 23 years old, because you don't have enough experience. You you still got you milk around your mouth, man. Yeah, I think it's I think it's dope what DL says. Um, you know, even outside of, of cutting hair, like do you have do you have benefits? Do you have a four hundred one k? Are you setting? Are you mm-hmm. making this a career or are you just cutting hair? 
And uh, I know you got to wrap it up because you got a, a, a meeting that, that you got to go to. But that's something that you you definitely uh, believe in as well. Am I correct, Chico? Yeah, I definitely believe in, in, in it. Um, I called the meeting tonight. My shop is open 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Six days a week and 93 on Sundays. Today I closed at 8 o'clock. I had the guys clean up the shop. I said, 8.30, we're going to have a meeting. We're going to talk a little bit. There's going to be some things that they don't, they're not going to want to hear from out of my mouth. You know what I mean? But, I, you know, there's certain things that need to be corrected in every shop. And you ha it's very important that you have meetings. But guess what? After I'm done talking to them, I got a group of people, a finance company is going to sit there and talk to them about how, what to do with their money, how to invest their money, setting up 401ks, life insurance policies, health insurance, all that good stuff that's going to get them on the right track. Cause I got a couple new guys, man. I got like 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 two new guys that, you know, are new in the game, and they haven't heard this. My old my my my, my old heads have, you know what I mean. I've had guys in here five six years with me that's that's been riding out. You know they've heard it, but it's good for them to to hear it again if they're not doing it. Of course. But you know it, it's very important as a as a business owner, and this goes out to all my business fellow business owners out there. If you own a barber shop or or, or whatever a tattoo shop, it don't matter what. Hold meetings at least once a month with your crew. You know, that brings the, the family closer, man. They say a family that prays together stays together. My mother used to have little family meetings where she used to call us in all together. With, you know what I mean? Hey, I need you to tighten up with this. I need you to help out more around the house with this. I need you to do this. You know, and that brings everybody together as a team. Yeah. But if you have no communication, if you don't bring that bond together with those meetings, your your your, your house is going to is gonna flop, man. Yeah. You know, a house divided within itself has no what? You know, you got to think about these type of things, man. Yeah. So I know you got to go to that meeting, but I just want to ask you one more question, and then I want you to give the people, you know, where they could reach you at, your Instagram and all that stuff. But the final question, so you can get to this important meeting, is what makes a real barber to you? Oh, man, a real barber is, is, is somebody that puts everybody else first, man. Um, as for, you know, caring for people, taking care of people, good customer service. Uh, talking to people, basically everything that we mentioned before, man. Um, just, just, just great customer service, man. It, it, letting that client know it's all about them. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously, it, it's not all about them after nine o'clock at night. It's about me and my family. But from nine a.m. to nine p.m., guess what? It's about them. You know, servicing that client, taking care of that client, making sure that that business uh, uh, stays busy, that those doors keep revolving. You know, that's a barber has to have that character, man. They have to have that, that finesse. They have to greet people when they walk in the door. If you're not even, you don't even greet somebody when they walk in that door. What type of person are you? You're just taking people's money. You a thief. You're not a barber. You know what I mean? All you're doing is stealing. I mean, give people what they're paying for. Just great customer service, great customer skills, conversations. You know, humility. You know, those things are very important, man. Cleansiness. That makes a barber. You have to know the industry inside and out, the business. You know what I mean? You got, you got to be able to sharpen your own tools, fix your own clippers. You know, you got to know all this. If you don't know what clippers is out there, what tools is out there, don't call yourself a real barber, man. Keep yourself, educate yourself. Keep re-educating yourself, up to date. You know, read books, read magazines. Look look at the, 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 the trends out there. Look at Instagram. It's free. You know what I mean? That, that makes a good barber. Just an all-around person that takes care of of the people around them that's been taking care of them because these are the people paying our bills. That's what's up, man. Definitely. And Chico, you have an real quick. You have an event coming up um, here in April. I'll definitely be there showcasing. You know, just just so you know, yeah. Jesse reached out to me and uh, definitely want to be there and support. But uh, uh, can you like give out the information and if anybody wants to get tickets, you know where where to get them from and all that good stuff. Yeah, April twenty fourth, uh, we're gonna have a, a barber educational seminar and private dinner. So dinner is included, $75 for three hours. We're going to have some motivational speaking. We're going to be going over marketing, over branding. We're going to have some cut techniques. Um, uh, Daniel Moore, success addict, he's going to be in the building. So it's, it's, it's mine and his class is going to be real dope. That $75 includes the dinner and includes entry to the cut party that we're having afterwards. Jesse Lima is going to be in the building. Uh, Curtis Smith is going to be in the building. Myself, Danny, uh, Team Exotics will be in there uh, hosting. It's going to be be a lot of showcasing a lot of barbers uh and stylists from all over if you need tickets the tickets for the cup party are only twenty dollars if you want to just come to the cup party there's a link in my bio go to booms world and you can click on that link you can order online if you're in the area you can get them from me directly jesse has tickets uh you can hit up that number that's on the on the on the flyer that's on my instagram you can hit that up 239 uh 529 8755 you can hit me up directly 
and um, I can get you tickets, flyers, I got posters, whatever you need, man. If you want to invite people, invite people. This is going to be a, a, a dope party because not only is it going to be barbers and stylists in the building, there's going to be regular people, you know, that's going to be just there supporting their barbers and stuff. So it's going to be a great, it's going to be dope. great. We're going to have vendors there. If you want to vend the booth, we're going to have vendors there. Uh, uh, food, drinks is going to be a really, really nice thing. That's dope, man. I can't wait to be there. And if you're listening, you're a barber and you haven't been to an event, you're really selling yourself short. Surround, like Chico said earlier, man, your network is important, man. Surround yourself with positive people, man. So look forward to seeing everybody out there. Chico, thank you so much for your time and, and, and spend some time with us on the on the Barber Session podcast. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on for real, man. You've been here to my shop before and you've done some motivational speaking. And just like that night you came to the shop on the show, you have not disappointed, bro. You spit bars, bro. So I appreciate you coming on. No, I appreciate y'all. Chris and Chris, I love y'all boys, man. Support, love, love. You already know, man. Anything y'all need, y'all, y'all already know you can reach out to me. You got some family out here in Fort Myers, man. Everybody listening out there, I appreciate y'all taking the time out to listen. Love every single one of y'all, man. And y'all stay blessed, man, and keep pushing forward. All right, brother. Likewise, man. Yes, sir. All right, brother. That was probably one of the coolest interviews we've done here, huh, Chris? Yeah, that interview was dope, man. That he's he's always he's always good, positive people to talk to, man. And knowing his story and where where he is today is is dope, man. It's just it's motivating. It's motivating just to know him. Definitely, bro. I mean, you can't not be around him, bro. His attitude is infectious, bro. Just makes you want to go harder. Of course. Yeah. So, um. We're gonna we're gonna go out to the, to Fort Myers definitely. We're gonna be out there. We're going to Jacksonville up. this weekend, right? We're going to Jacksonville this weekend, yeah. Um, but one thing that stands out about Chico Boom is that he's always talking about helping other people, and I think that's I think that's one of the reasons, one of the big reasons why he's grown so quickly. Why would you not want somebody like that on your team? Definitely, absolutely. So, Bazio, yep. what did you think of the barber session last week? The barber session was dope, man. I, I mean, a lot of people showed up. The house was packed. You know, um, it was just dope seeing every, seeing all these people and networking with all these people. And and uh, even, even afterwards, you know, conversating with everyone and answering questions, it was dope, man. It was the first one. And first of many. Yeah, it was, the first, it was the first one, but not too savvy. Not at all, man. I was really impressed, bro. There was, I don't think there was one person that came to the class that was from Tampa. Nah, there that's were, crazy. There were there were a few, but probably like ninety percent of them were from out of town, out of state. Crazy. That's somebody from Georgia in the house. Yeah. All the way from Georgia, man. That's crazy. Yeah. It was a uh, it was a humbling experience for me, man. As you know, I'm mostly behind the scenes on stuff. You know, mm-hmm. I do the dirty work, like you like to say. So it was a, it was a humbling, different experience for me, getting up and and showcasing and and doing a, a haircut tutorial and and speaking in front of the speaking in front of the class. It was it was really cool. I look forward to doing more of them. Yeah, definitely. We'll we'll be doing more, man. Definitely. Uh, so yo, is Golden State gonna do it? They're gonna beat that record. A record I thought would never be touched. I thought I didn't think I'd have this conversation. In my lifetime, like the way you said that is like they're gonna do it easy. You think like easy? It won't come close, bro. They're gonna do it. Yo, as much as I hate to say it, man, and I know I know they're gonna get past them, but the Spurs haven't lost a game in like a year and a half, bro. At home, that's sick. <laughs> if it wasn't for how good Golden State is, the Spurs would be having a ridiculous season. They've only lost what nine games? Yeah, and they're nine. undefeated at home in like almost two years. It's ridiculous, bro. Insane. Bunch of old guys, bro. I don't get it. P- getting paid Social Security. It's that New England Patriots uh, system. <laughs> the system. coach. You saw what they did? They got uh, New England got rid of Chandler Jones, man. Their best pass rusher this week. They got rid of him for a second-round pick. The Patriots are just a system, bro. If they want you, they'll sign you the year before your contract's up. If they don't want you, they just trade you and get a, and get a pick for it. They don't, they, they don't, they don't the care, The only bro. person they need to pay is Tom Brady. That's it. They don't even pay him. Well, you, know you, you, <laughs> you know how much he gets paid? You know how much he gets paid? Like $14 million a year. Brock Eiswaller is making like $18 million a year. He takes pay cuts so they can bring <laughs> people in. I don't get it. But they don't bring nobody in. Ever. 
I don't understand. Like, he's getting fleeced by his own team. He's taking a pay cut so they can improve the team, and then they don't improve the team. <laughs> well, they still win. <sighs> As they say, it's the Patriot way. I, I don't <laughs> get it, man. I wish there was a Buccaneer way, but that ain't, that's damn, damn for sure. Not There's no such thing. The Buccaneer way is firing coaches every year. Yo, so John Bones Jones is fighting. Yo, he is. He's fighting your boy again. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, I can't remember. Fat boy. Who do you who do you have in that one? Bones Jones, man. Come on. Cormier. He's fighting Cormier. He Cormier. told he told him at at the at the pre fight. He told him, that "You better thank God you got that cushy commentating job because I'm gonna send you right back to that after the fight's over." Ooh. I mean, you care to wager? Or you go? You got you you going on Bo- right, Bones I Jones? I got Bones Jones. What do you okay. mean? You got, I was hey, about to say on I'm the back. show. You gonna try to play me like that? Hey. hey. You never know, man. You come out with some ridiculous stuff. Like LeBron James is the best player in, in the NBA ever. Never said that. He has said that. I have documented proof I never from said Louis that. the Barber. I say yeah, potential from Ferdy. To be the best. Ferdy, if you're listening, reach out. Ferdy's heard you. That was like three years ago when he had potential to be the best ever. He did. Never said potential. JP, clear this up, bro. Come on. Yeah, so that was an- another episode. Episode five, right? Episode five. Chico Boom And we got some surprises Some special guesses uh, Coming up Some big guests coming up Big names people Big names So The Barber Session Podcast Signing out From Headline Studios The Barber Session